One-handed catches in the NFL didn't used to be a thing. That all changed when Odell Beckham did this. And now George Pickens does this. There's one key factor that has contributed to all these spectacular gravity-defying catches you see. The gloves the players are wearing. But why does the NFL allow them when the gloves are clearly performance enhancing? What catching aids has the league banned before? Who invented these ultra sticky contraptions and what does this extremely satisfying clip have to do with it all? The answer to all of those questions are coming up right now. Stick them. Before we get into the gloves, it's important we understand an insane time in the NFL. We have to go back to the stick em era. The concept of using something sticky to get a better grip on the ball is probably as old as the game itself. But look at this picture of Lester Hayes. He's covered in more sticky goo than an OnlyFans model. That's because back in the 70s, players were allowed to essentially bathe themselves in glue and give them a better grip on the ball. Call it the spider tack of the era. Except it was appropriately called stick'em. Or jism? No, stick'em. The problem, well, besides the fact of being covered in what looks like tree sap from a pine forest, the glue was getting everywhere. The NFL finally had enough of this on-field bukkake and banned stick'em in 1981, even though Jerry Rice has admitted to using it on his gloves well after the ban. Did I put a little adhesive spray on those gloves at that time? Yeah, I, I did. Just a clearer, less detectable version. For about the next 20 years, you will see many wide receivers either going barehanded, using scuba diving gloves, or using standard leather gloves. But things changed when a Canadian in a lab in Pakistan shook up the football world. The sticky glove era. Believe it or not, the technology you see in today's gloves was actually discovered over 25 years ago by Jeff Beraznik, a former college level wide receiver in Canada. One day at practice, he noticed a rival catching punts one-handed while wearing a pair of ill-fitting orange gloves. These gloves were called glass cutters, rubberized mitts that one would use to handle actual glass. Beraznik went to a typical hardware store and got himself a pair, and he was on to something. He would later team up with a safety glove company and made multiple trips to a lab in Pakistan to figure out what the ideal composition would be to make his new gloves lightweight and stickier than Monica Lewinsky's dress. After perfecting the mix, he came up with SeaTac and founded the glove company Cutters, and the rest is history. His SeaTac formula hasn't really changed since then. It's a mix of silicone and rubber components that creates scientific adhesion to the ball. In fact, it's the same substance used in these satisfying clips and around your toilet. And according to MIT, the silicone gloves provide 20% more grip force than that of your weak, sweaty hand. But how are these once safety gloves even legal in the NFL as they are scientifically performance enhancing? Legal by banning. What's funny about the NFL is when they outlawed sticky brown hand jizz, they actually made these new gloves legal. According to Rule 5, Section 4, Article 4, Item 8 of the NFL Rule Book, gosh, that's a word salad, players may wear gloves with a tackified surface if such tacky substance does not adhere to the football or otherwise cause handling problems for players. That's a pretty clear directive. So the miracle of silicone rubber isn't just that it's sticky as hell, it's that it doesn't leave a snail trail of disgusting residue on the ball. The gloves only improve grip. Technically, they are not sticky. So the NFL gets a win-win. The ball stay clean and smooth like a Manscaped ad, and you see outrageous one-handed catches like this, and this, and this. I researched if there are any guidelines for how thick or sticky the silicone can be, and there doesn't appear to be any regulations around that. So if you are an evil chemist and can figure out how to make a lightweight glove that has a surface thicker than a Jello Jiggler, and stickier than Marv in Home Alone 3, as long as there isn't any residue, you can go for it. The future? So will there ever be legislation or guidelines around the gloves? I doubt it. Odell Beckham claimed the gloves weren't the only reason why he made spectacular catches, and he's totally right. Getting in position, running the right route, seeing the ball, those are all things a great wide receiver needs to do. And even the gloves can't always help you. There has been discussion in the past about issuing a ruling or limiting the gloves, but the NFL saw Odell and was like, nah. I think even if the NFL banned gloves, which they won't, you would still see insane one-handed catches. Because that's all kids practice now instead of running routes, getting in the right position, and catching the ball. 
So the next time you see one of those incredible grabs, just remember you have glass, a Canadian, and Pakistan to thank for it. Do you like coffee? Of course you do. And there's nothing like a warm, fresh batch of aromatic coffee filling your morning with smells of optimism and delicious, ethically sourced Arabica beans. Unless you're a Giants fan, then you only get the smell of my coffee, Bench Warmer Brew, which is a beautifully crafted light roast. And that means it has a lot of caffeine and none of Dave Gettleman's draft picks inside. And guess what? My fellow buddies also have blends of their own. Yes, that salty Yinzer. And that tiny Broncos fan even whipped up their own batches. So after this video, you can go to benchwarmerbrew.com from the link below and order my beans, either pre-ground or ground. And if you subscribe for monthly deliveries, you can save up to 25%. Benchwarmer Brew, the five points blend, the most cheatingest brand of coffee ever.